All right, hello everyone, and we are back with the third and final video in the NCS Fitness Seminar video series. My name is Brian Newberry, and in the last two videos, we talked about nutrition. We talked about different types of nutritional plans based on specific fitness goals that one may have. We focused on things like macronutrients, micronutrients, the importance of each, uh, nutritional plans catered towards someone who might be bulking or trying to lose fat, um, all important stuff. And so today we're going to be moving on to the topic of physical activity. Now you'll notice I use the phrase physical activity instead of a phrase like lifting weights or going to the gym because in my opinion and it is also scientifically backed that physical activity is far more than just going to the gym far more than just lifting weights and so we're gonna be talking about um, uh, specific physical activities and uh, things that you can do besides going to the gym to see physical results uh, combined with the nutritional knowledge that we already covered so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be covering two main types of physical activity. Uh, we're going to be talking about weight training, and then we will also be talking about calisthenics. Now, obviously there are more than just these two, but we're going to be focusing mainly on these two types of physical activity with regards to muscular development in terms of developing your muscles and strength and flexibility and things like that. So let's go ahead and jump right into calisthenics. So when talking about calisthenics, calisthenics can basically be defined as um, any exercises used to develop strength and flexibility without the use of special equipment. Basically, uh, in simpler terms, it's body weight workouts. And so with each type of physical activity, we're going to be breaking them down into pros and cons, and then I'll be sharing my own personal op opinion um, and which one I personally prefer. So looking at some pros for calisthenics, um, one of the first pros is simple body weight workout. So basically what that means is you are using your own body weight uh, as a substitute for external weights. Uh, this can be for this can be convenient for people who may not have access to a conventional gym, might not might not have access to the use of external weights. Another pro is that you see increases in strength, cardiovascular endurance, and muscular endurance. And although this holds true for both types of physical activity, it is still a pro, in my opinion. And the last and biggest pro for calisthenics is no gym required. Basically, for lack of a better term, even though it sounds a little cliche, the world is your gym when it comes to the world of calisthenics and fitness, meaning that you don't have to go to a conventional gym in order to do these calisthenics workouts because you are using your own body weight and you are doing body weight exercises. So for someone who might not have access to a conventional gym, like I mentioned, this makes it extremely convenient for people in those situations. Um, and that is why it is one of the biggest pros with calisthenics. So obviously there are cons that I have personally found and in my opinion, and one of the cons for calisthenics is that it's harder to isolate certain muscle groups. Now this can be a problem for people who are maybe looking to develop a certain muscle muscle group um, or body part for whatever reason, whether it be a, a muscular deficiency or an injury that they're trying to recover from or just um, having you know a focus on developing a certain muscle group for whatever reason. And when you're using your own body weight, it makes it more difficult because you are performing mainly what are called compound movements. Now, Basically, what that means is that a compound movement is when you are using multiple muscle groups to perform the exercise. So if we're looking at something like a pull-up, for example, you're using your entire back, which is already comprised of three main muscle groups to begin with, but you're also using your arms, your biceps, you're using your core to support the posture in your back, and so you're using multiple muscle groups that's why it's defined as a compound movement so if i'm trying to let's say develop something specifically like my chest and i'm trying to isolate my chest calisthenics is going to make that a lot harder because a majority of calisthenics exercises are going to be compound movements now 
obviously there are exceptions, but the majority of the exercises that you find in calisthenics workouts are going to be compound movements. Now another drawback that you'll see with calisthenics in my opinion is that muscle growth will be much slower. Now when, when you first start training, you're obviously not going to be very strong because your body's not used to it. So in the beginning, that'll make training and progressing with your strength and muscle growth much slower when you're using your own body weight if you're not physically strong enough to move your own body weight yet. Obviously, as your body starts to acclimate towards, uh, starts to acclimate uh, towards the exercises and you start to become used to it and you start to become stronger, that'll change. But in the beginning, the progress is going to be slow if you're not physically strong enough to fully perform the exercises in the beginning. And this kind of ties into the last con, which is that it's a lot harder to track your progress. So being able to track your progress with training is vital in order to see if you are making improvements or not. But when you're performing calisthenics exercises, it's going to be a lot harder to track your progress in certain areas like strength because you're using the same weight every time. So the only way that you're really going to be able to see if you're getting stronger or not is if you're increasing volume or your weight is increasing. So if you're gaining weight, for example, if you're bulking and you are still able to do the certain amount of reps or more repetitions, then that would be a sign that you're getting stronger. But if you're staying the same weight, it's going to be more difficult to track your progress in terms of, of weight gain and muscle gain as well. All right, so now moving on to weight training. So weight training can be defined as a system of conditioning involving weightlifting, especially for strength and endurance. So lifting weights can be a simpler term if, if you like that. Uh, so looking at some pros and cons for weightlifting, uh, you're going to see that a lot of the pros and cons for weightlifting are kind of the cons and pros that there were for calisthenics that are kind of swapped just in terms of, you know, what they are. And so looking at some pros for weight training right off the bat, um, better muscle isolation for training. Uh, that was one of the pro that was one of the cons, excuse me, that you saw on the calisthenics slide. And basically better muscle isolation training by using external weights separate from your body weight, it's gonna be much easier to isolate certain muscle groups for specific training. So for example, if I want to develop my biceps more, but not my back. Instead of doing a pull-up, which is a compound movement, I can go and use a barbell or a dumbbell and perform bicep curls to specifically isolate that muscle group and develop it uh, faster. And that also means that my muscle gain is going to be faster because I'm using external weights. Instead of having to wait for my body to acclimate towards the exercises and become used to using that amount of weight and become strong enough to support the weight for the exercises, if I'm not physically strong enough in the beginning, I can just drop the weight to a lighter weight so that I can still perform the exercises you know, to the fullest potential that I have. And then that will also mean that I can start progressing faster because I don't have to wait for my body to adjust and become strong enough to do the exercises in the first place. This also means that it's going to be easier to track progress. So all these pros kind of tie together in some way or another, but it being easier to track progress is because if I'm using external weights, then I'll be able to visually and easily tell if I'm getting stronger because the weights will increase. So instead of having to track your own body weight in, in terms of the weight that you're using when performing exercises, you're tracking an external weight, which makes it you know much easier to see if you are physically getting stronger. Now, the use of external weight sort of ties in a lot to some of the cons that I'm going to be talking about right here. So the first con is injury is going to be a lot easier. Um, now, this happens when you're using external weight specifically if you're not performing the exercises with proper form or you're using a weight that's too heavy and your body's not ready for it, then that means that you're at a greater potential to injure yourself. And the last two cons kind of tie in together basically the last con is that you have to go to a gym because that's where the equipment's going to be you have to go to a specific location to train because that's where the the weights the equipment the machines that's where all of the things that you need in order to perform these weight training exercises that's where it's going to be 
Um, so if you can't afford a gym membership, if you don't have access to a conventional gym, then that's obviously going to be a con for you. All right, so now we're going to take a look at some specific calisthenics and weight training exercises. So looking at some calisthenics exercises, um, basically a calisthenic or an, any exercise in general can be defined as an exercise that creates tension in the muscle using body weight, body weight specifically for calisthenics. And so I just listed a couple of um, common calisthenics exercises, things like push-ups, pull-ups, crunchies, planks, leg raises, single double leg squats, calf raises, uh, bench dips, and burpees. And then also because I will be linking this presentation down in the description below, I added a link to an example calisthenics workout that I personally uh, tried myself and know that other people in the calisthenics community have used. It's a popular one. And so for those of you who are trying to get started in terms of calisthenics, I suggest you take a look at that uh, example workout and, and give it a shot. It has a lot of really, really great information on there. So then taking a look at some weight training exercises. So compound movements, what are they and why are they important? So we already kind of talked about compound movements when talking about calisthenics. And so, uh, excuse me, for someone who may be specifically trying to isolate a certain muscle group, compound movements are going to make that more difficult. But for people who are just trying to grow overall size, then compound movements are going to be good in that sense because you're, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone, for lack of a better term, because you are developing and growing and using certain muscle groups all at the same time, which means that you're, as your muscles develop, you will not only be more symmetrical, um, but you, those muscles will grow at the same pace in terms of strength. So the most common compound movements that you see with weight training are things like squat, bench press, deadlift, and these three together uh, incorporate basically all of the major muscle groups in the human body which is really, really important if you're trying to just grow overall size in general. But then obviously for someone who may have a desire to isolate certain muscle groups for training for whatever reason, um, you have isolation movements, so things like bicep curls, tricep extension, calf press, leg extension, lateral raises. Anything that isolates a singular muscle, muscle group is going to be defined as an isolation movement. And then again, just like with the calisthenics exercises, I linked an example workout down here. It was actually the program that I was running for about eight months and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you are looking for a place to start in terms of weight training, I take a look at this, uh, this link right here. So one thing that I want to talk about for a second is the mind to muscle connection. Now, this is a term used, <coughs> excuse me, this is a term used in the fitness industry basically to describe that whenever you're working out or doing any kind of training, you are purposely focusing on the particular muscle or group of muscles that you were using in that exercise and focusing on achieving maximum contraction and stretch. So to briefly talk about uh, what happens when you lift weights in terms of the, the structure of your muscles is that your, your muscles are made up of muscle, little muscle fibers and they're kind of woven together like this. And so when you perform an exercise that creates tension on the muscle, what happens is you get little micro tears in the muscle fibers. And the micro tears occur when you're putting uh, you know, an excessive amount of stress on the muscle. So those micro tears occur and then through the process of proper nutrition and rest and recovery, those micro tears heal, but then they heal bigger and stronger so that they can withstand the amount of uh, tension and stress that you're putting on the muscles next time. So making sure that you are focusing on every single repetition, making sure that you are visualizing the muscle contracting. So for example, if I'm doing something like a bicep curl, for example, as I'm bringing the weight up, I am visualizing in my mind the muscles contracting in my bicep. When I get to the top, I'm squeezing as hard as I can, contracting as hard as I can, and then as I slowly release the weight, I'm visualizing the muscle uh, retracting and stretching out to make sure that I'm getting that, that proper stretch uh, and focusing on contracting the muscles as hard as I can and then stretching them out so that you're, you're optimizing the, the micro tears and the muscle fibers so that they can grow back um, bigger and stronger as quickly as possible. 
Now, one thing that I had to learn very early on when I first started weight training um, is that form is primary, weight is secondary. And when we were talking earlier about how one of the cons for weight training is injury, this usually comes from people focusing mainly on just moving weight and lifting with their egos instead of their brain. And so that was one thing that I had to learn very early on is that I have to check my ego at the door, focus on perfect form, maximizing my contractions and stretching of my muscle to make sure that I'm optimizing the work that I'm putting in. And you see that a lot of people injure themselves when they're lifting weights that are too heavy is because they're just trying to move the weight around and they're not really focusing on their form. And that means that if you're not moving the weight in the proper way, um, then you can either hyperextend your muscles, you can tear muscles if it's not ready for the weight that you're using. And so basically not using proper form just puts you at a greater risk of injury. That's why focusing on form every single time is going to be super, super important. Not only to make sure that you are developing the muscles the right way, but that you have a good longevity of muscles because you are not asking too much of them and possibly injuring them. Now the last thing that I want to talk about that is so important that it gets its own slide is that is cardio. So we're going to be talking about cardio. <clears throat> and so cardio can really be defined as any cardiovascular exercise or any movement that raises your heart rate. Now cardio is so important because besides diet, cardio is the most important tool to lose fat. And so when you're doing a cardio exercise, your body is using energy, which comes from the calories that you eat. And I'm not sure if I already used this analogy, but I'll do it again. If you, I like to visualize our fat molecules. If you think of your fat molecules as like a sponge, and when it's full and full of energy from the calories that you eat, and then when you go and, when you go and exude uh, energy in like a cardio exercise or pretty much any physical activity, it's like your body is wringing out that sponge using that energy which causes the fat molecules to shrink which then reduces the amount of body fat that you have and so next to having a proper diet it's one of the most important tools that you can use uh, to lose fat not only that but it helps keep one of your most important muscles your heart it helps keep it healthy and strong and helps prevent things like heart disease and it has also been scientifically proven that people who do cardio um, extend the longevity of their life um, by upwards of decades depending on the amount of cardio that you're doing and so not only is it an amazing tool to help lose fat it helps keep your um, your heart strong but it also basically helps you live longer so it's it's important for all around general health not just in the gym and not just for for physical activity so that is it for this video that is it for all the information that I have and so I hope you all enjoyed these videos. I appreciate you watching. This senior project has been quite an experience for me. I know that I learned some new things doing research and speaking with experts in the community to you know, widen my knowledge. And I hope that you learned something new by watching these videos. And yeah, thank you for watching.